Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. Uh, Maybe you have something like this in your house. Next to my refrigerator on my pantry door is a piece of paper. It was taped there, I think, over a year ago by my kids. Now, it's not the only piece of paper taped up in our house. Uh, We have paper taped all over the place, art projects and, and little crafts. But this one is the only one that has a collection of wisdom on it. And it actually blends into the background for me most of the time, but I as I was thinking about these words that we have today from God, ended up seeing it in a different way. Uh, On that sheet happens to be wisdom from a guy named Fred Rogers. You know him best as Mr. Rogers. And he said this, Who you are inside is what helps you make and do everything in life. Who you are inside is what helps you make and do everything in life. I mean, think about that wisdom for a moment. What gets lived inside gets expressed and lived in action outside, and people rub up against that, don't they? And what's inside ends up coming outside at some point, and that is truth for all of us. It's truth based on what you can see and based on our actions. That little truth from Fred Rogers hangs above your life, and it can be the biggest piece of celebration when you go, yeah, it's going pretty well, or it can be the biggest and most painful mirror held up in front of you if life hasn't been going so well. Uh, It's a piece of wisdom, and it can function in a number of ways. It's actually not so simple as it hangs over your life. Happened to be walking by a picture the other day that had some more wisdom on it. This not in my house, but in another place. It was one person, a picture of them serving another person. It was very obvious what it was trying to communicate, but on it was, do you have anything like this in your house, a a picture with a saying on it? Here here was the wisdom. Actions speak louder than words. You know that little piece of English wisdom. And it holds true, and it can be the greatest moment of celebration when you see that, and it reminds you how well things are going, and it can also be one of the greatest moments of pain for you if it makes you think about how your actions spoke in a non-helpful way. Uh, That's what wisdom does. Good wisdom shows us something about life, and it makes us stop and evaluate things. So I want to try this piece of wisdom on you this morning. You ready for it? Delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Those are godly words of wisdom from King David. They come out of Psalm 37, and... They're part of what's known as a wisdom psalm in the the same vein as the words of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And if Solomon was the writer of those, well, then David's son did pretty well. But it turns out dad had some things to say about what it means to be a wise man or woman of God. And it's right here in the heart of Psalm 37. And I got to say, there's a lot more going on in Psalm 37, verse 4, than first appears. Over these last four weeks, I don't know about you, it's been a little easier for me to hold on to this whole delight concept, to to sit and to steep in this reality that God delights in me, and I hope it's been for you as well. We have covered some, uh, some incredible ground, a diverse usage of this word delight, and Pastor Russell's taken us back into the Old Testament. Sometimes delight means woohoo, it's this exciting word that captures something of joy that he has in us. Sometimes it means like yum, it's a delicious word, and, and we've sat with those words of God over us, even as we've heard God lavish His delight on us. I mean, you, if you were here, you heard Him say to you clearly that He sings over you. Isn't that incredible? Calling us beloved in the way that a bridegroom gushes over his bride and told that we are valued and priceless just because He loves us. I mean, can you imagine waking up and hearing that every morning, going through your day and having those words hanging over your life? Can't get enough of that. And it does something to us, this delight that God has. When we've been praying, like you did again today in our confession, that we would delight in His will and walk in His ways, well, guess what? God has been faithful to shape that delight in us. In fact, our delight today flows out of God's delight in us. It's a response, our delight in Him, and it's shaped first and foremost 
by His delights in us. Uh, It's a reciprocal thing. It's kind of like the picture up here on the screen. Is that mother delighting in her child or is the child delighting in its mother? I think it's both, isn't it? And when it comes to the relationship that our God has brought us into, it starts with Him and yet delight is returned toward Him in His person, in His presence, in His heart. And today, David's words testify to this reality that God's delight in us is so good, and it shapes something in us as these words of wisdom hang over our lives. Delight in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. I remember seeing that kind of delight once. I've seen it a number of times, but I I saw it one time years ago in a couple that I had the privilege of marrying, and and it was a beautiful thing. I remember the lead-up to their wedding involved pre-marriage counseling. We talked about finances. We talked about habits that they would bring into their marriage. We talked about expectations that they would have of each other and how those could be both good and bad. And we also talked a lot about God's delight in them. I don't think we called it that at the moment. We talked probably about Jesus and his love for them, but... But they received those promises, and on the day of their wedding, they stood there, and you could see it in their eyes. They were delighting in each other, but there was something different about this couple because they also were delighting in the relationship that they had first and foremost with their God. I mean, that's what I saw. So as they gathered there that day before God and each other, as they said their vows and they walked off to music and applause, It was obvious that God had shaped their hearts and their delight by His delight in them. And what also is true is that He had shaped their desires, the desires of their heart, to be the desires of His heart. And when they looked at each other and you knew they desired to be husband and wife, it was His desire for them as well. You see, that's what God does. As He delights in us, He also shapes the desires of of our hearts to be more and more the desires of His heart. And and as their pastor that day, as I watched this play out, it was clear that God had also, in that relationship, shaped my heart and the desires that I had for them to live together as husband and wife in the delight that God had brought them into. Delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Friends, that's just one example of many that I could give you, and you could give me examples from your life of how God's delight in you has caused you to reciprocate and to love and to find joy in Him. So how have you experienced? I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's something you read in your devotion that caused you to delight in God, something like how valued you have been in the eyes of Jesus or the promise of peace that He spoke over you in that devotion, that that time when you walked by the the picture and you saw something that reminded you and His Word was there and and all of a sudden you could feel His peace in your life in a very tangible way. Or or maybe it was the moment He spoke about His mission Jesus did to you and and He wrapped your heart into His heart that His reign would come into this world and, and you felt His invitation, but it was more than that. It was a moment of grace with that invitation, and you felt like you could follow Him anywhere. And you delighted in the God who lavishes His love on you in Jesus. Perhaps it's been in this place that you've heard the gospel proclaimed of Jesus' great love for you. And as you heard that, you received it, and you saw the person in your mind who's been a pain for you all these years, but You were shaped to delight in His will and walk in His ways. And so delighting in God, you walked out and you went and served that person. They received it that time and and it shaped something in them and life was different for the two of you and it caused you to delight even more in your God. It was the desire of His heart first that shaped the desire of your heart. And sometimes that's how it goes when everything just seems to be clicking. You know those moments, right? And when you're there... It's fantastic. God delights in you and it shapes the desires of your heart. I think that's what's going on here today in Isaiah chapter 61, that reading that you heard about where Isaiah says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. Do you hear that relationship piece come out? My God, not someone else's. 
For he's clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. And maybe today when you hear that, you're like, give me more. I want more of that. We can't get enough. If, if that's what spending time with God in relationship is all about, then sign me up, get me back in church next Sunday because I want more of that. Delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. And yet, what Isaiah speaks as truth, what, what I think connects so well into what the psalmist says today as soon as you begin trying to live out that truth that holds over your life can get pretty complex to hold on to, can't it? Because you know from your life that it's not just a waltz of bliss as you go from day to day. Hardly. So maybe it won't surprise you that the words Isaiah speaks in Isaiah 61 today were not spoken to a people who had everything going for them. In fact, these words of truth of God's heart for them, of freedom and and grace that He was speaking over them, garments of salvation, a robe of righteousness, those words were speaking not to people walking around in bliss in their lives, but people who were in exile in a foreign land with foreign gods and foreign ways all around them. I imagine there were some of them that still found delights in the Lord, as they clung to his words of promise, but there were days even for them when it didn't look right, didn't feel like nothing made sense. How do you hold on to the words of Isaiah? Words of promise, of a future redemption, forgiveness, deliverance, hanging over your life when nothing in front of you seems to make sense. And when it seems like the desires of your heart never ever come true, they never get answered, your prayers fall on deaf ears. The words of Isaiah here are true. They're words of a hope-filled reality spoken over you as well. But what happens when that reality looks for you like it did for the people of old, of God's people, so absent of hope? It's not so easy to hold on to David's words today now, is it? And I know you've been there, in that place where your heart desires something that seems to elude you so, so often. You desire a smooth path forward. Wouldn't it be nice if you just had some clear direction in your life? I mean, once in a while, something could go right. Something could be stable. You could just see what you were supposed to do. But for you, it's just complex all the time. And you know what that feels like. You long for a restored relationship, a moment of peace. Maybe for you, you desire complete healing and You haven't gotten any good news yet, not even an ounce. And when that happens, what happens to your delight in God? It's not so simple, is it? Now to hang on to these words of David, of truth that hang over us. Um, You know, they couldn't wait for Sunday. You remember that couple I told you about at the beginning who were delighting in each other on the day of their wedding? They could not wait for Sunday. And I know this because they're one of the only couples that I've married who showed up the next day in worship. That's how much they delighted in God. And I remember they were there with smiles on their face. I mean, they were newlyweds. Everything was great. They were delighting in each other. And then she showed up in my office. It was about a year later. And when she showed up, she looked so sad and broken. Every ounce of delight had been shattered in her life because her husband had been arrested. And this was not the plan. It wasn't what was supposed to happen. And as she sat down in my office that day, she wanted to know why God would allow something like this to happen to her, to her marriage, to her life. And you know what? As her pastor, I had no good answer for her. I had no godly word of wisdom that could guide her back onto the path of everyday bliss because this this was just hell for her. And, And we simply sat that day, as I recall, and she cried and we prayed. And somehow God was shaping the desire of both of our hearts. Somehow He was shaping delight in us, though I don't think either of us could find much delight that day because our hearts longed for peace and clarity, joy, and even reconciliation. Delight in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Sometimes it's just not so simple to hold on to that truth now, is it? 
the challenge for us as God's people, no matter what you've experienced, is actually a heart issue when it comes down to it. The desires of our heart being what controls our delight in God and not the other way around. Remember, we started by saying it starts with God and then we respond. And when the desires of our heart are what controls our our delight in God, then something is fundamentally messed up. See, what we want often trumps what he wants for us. What we long for often supersedes his longing to have our hearts, our lives, to be in relationship with us. And we end up making delight something of a quid pro quo. uh, God, if you do this for me, then I'll delight in you. And I don't think we set out as God's people to do this at all. It's just what our broken hearts are inclined to do. We can't help ourselves because our hearts are broken by sin. So it becomes something like this. My delight in you, God, well, if I'm really, really good, if I do enough good things, then maybe you'll bless me in this way. Or if I try really, really hard, then maybe I'll get you fill in the blank. And the more we do that, the more we, we mess the whole thing up, we separate ourselves from a relationship that he has started with us, and the more we separate ourselves from what true delight is all about. So as we make the turn in this delight series from God's delight in us to our delight in Him, you got to know that this truth of David still holds for us. Delight in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. This psalm of David undoubtedly would have hung over the life of Jesus as it would of any good Jewish boy. He would have been steeped in the Psalter, knowing the Psalms. They would have been part and parcel of his life. And I have a feeling that sometimes it was easy for Jesus to hold on to words of delight that his father spoke even through the Psalms. Don't you? I mean, moments like when his reign was so tangibly visible right there in front of him and everyone else, when demons were cast out, when people were healed immediately, when he sat down with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and they ate together and they laughed and they celebrated and they had moments of great joy. I think Jesus could hold on to these words and delight in his Father who was shaping the desires of his heart. And I have a feeling that it was darn hard for Jesus to hold on to the promises that God spoke over him as his son. Maybe on that day that Peter thought he knew better. Jesus, the cross isn't your path. I've got another way for you. And Peter actually rebuked Jesus. That had to be an incredibly painful day. Or the moment when sitting at supper in the upper room, Judas got up and walked out. The betrayer going to sell his Lord for 30 pieces of silver. And I have a feeling the heart of Jesus ached that day. And yet, it was the perfect love of his Father that shaped the perfect delight of his Son. Jesus' delight was never about his Father's actions. It was all about the relationship that his Father had created with his Son. It's what drove Jesus to prayer to quiet time with his father, to read scripture, to delight in the relationship that he had with his father all the time. It's what, it's what takes him to this moment where his father's delight in Jesus shaped the desires of Jesus' heart until cross and death were absolutely worth every single ounce of the suffering that he would endure because Jesus' heart was shaped to desire you your heart, your life, your delight. Delight in the Lord, David says, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And Jesus today looks at you and he says, amen, sign me up. I do it a thousand times over because the cross was worth every pain, every ounce of it, every agonizing breath, every drop of blood to have you, to save you, to work his delight in you. So, that your joy today in the Lord could be absolutely full in Him. And I think those words of Jesus in John 15 this morning are another way that Jesus reminds you of these words of David that hang over us today. As He says, as the Father has loved me, so I've loved you. Now, delight in the Lord, remain in my love. I've told you this so that 
my joy and delight may be in you, and so that your joy may be complete. The Father's delight in Jesus shaped His heart and His delight in the Father. And Jesus' delight in you shapes your heart and your desires to be more and more in line with the Father's delight for a relationship with you. Uh, So it's mutual, but as we delight in Jesus, our hearts then become more and more and more like His for the sake of others. Our desires become the desires of Jesus' heart in good times, but maybe more than that in the challenging times that you've got right there in front of you this morning. And I think that's what played out in the life of another person that I knew years ago. Happened to be someone in the same congregation. He was a follower of Jesus. Uh, And I think you've known people like this. He was kind to people. He always had a good attitude. The guy walked through life, and he was a leader in the church, and you just wanted to follow him. Everything was joy when you were in this guy's life. And it looked like the words of David in Psalm 37, 4, just kind of played out easily. Delight yourself in the Lord, that's what he did. And it seemed like the desires of his heart were always answered. It wasn't what I saw in my life, and I'm sure he had challenges in his but everything looked pretty darn good for this guy. And then one day his liver failed, major organ failure, and he got really sick, and it was horribly rough for him. He spent a long time in the hospital waiting on a transplant list, and it was up and down for him. And you know what happened to this guy? I think if it were me, my delight would have gone right out the window. I would have been depressed. I would have been sad. I wouldn't have known what to do. But, but instead, I'm sure it was hard. Instead of basing his delight in what he thought God should do for him, he instead leaned into the relationship that God had brought him into through the waters of his baptism. He turned to Scripture even when it was hard. He prayed. He was encouraged, and sometimes he needed it by fellow followers of Jesus And in all of that, as excruciating as it was, Jesus shaped this guy's heart to delight in his will and walk in his ways. And here's how it played out. I remember him saying this, and I remember the look on people's faces because they saw it played out too. Every person who came in that room had to sit down on his bed and hear about Jesus. Everybody who came in that room from the doctors to the nurses got to hear a promise that he had been given or received through Jesus' word. And everybody who came in that room you can bet, ended up meeting Jesus. Because Jesus had shaped that man's heart to be his heart for others. So delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Whether this week for you kind of clips along in bliss, it's going to happen for all of you, right? (laughs) Hardly. I think it's going to be a challenge for you. Whether it clips along well or it's challenging or whether your life looks like hell this week, These words of David hang over us as a reminder. We carry it out of here together with us that there is one who delights in you with everything he is and everything he has. And as you delight in that relationship, he shapes the desires of your heart to be more and more like his for the sake of others. Or maybe even better, let Jesus say it this way to you. I give you my joy, my joy to be in you, so that this week and always your joy may be complete. Amen.